Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven. If you watch my videos, you know that lately I've really found a love for planning and hosting themed parties. I'm not a professional party planner by any means, but I've thrown quite a few parties here at my home for myself, for my daughter. But this time I'm really excited because I'm actually planning a party for somebody else for the first time. And not only that, but this party is going to be held in another city. So this is actually gonna be a pretty interesting challenge. It's my niece Bella's third birthday and we are planning planning a super fun backyard water park themed birthday party for her. My sister and her family live in the Houston area, which is about three hours away from where I live. So this is going to be interesting, the fact that I'm planning this party completely remotely and we are taking everything on the road to be able to throw the party at their house in Houston. I'm Bella's Grammy. She loves bubbles, she loves water, she loves balloons. And I'm so excited for her to experience this super fun backyard water park party. Party. I really wanted to throw this party for my niece just sort of as my gift to her and I love party planning in general and I wanted to help my sister out by doing this for them and I also wanted to keep it budget friendly, simplify it a little bit, but still be able to bring that Raven Elise flair and have a really cute theme. I thought that we could have at least three tables set up. One table being the uh, main table where the cake is and maybe a couple of centerpieces or decor. One table for the snack bar, we have the snacks all laid out. And the other table is for the goodie boxes, which we're calling the gift shop. And each one of those tables will have the same type of decoration, some type of a tablecloth, maybe some uh, grass skirt or some tropical leaves because this party has kind of a tropical feel to it. We really wanted to make a big impact without having uh, a big expense. So I found these really cute digital downloads from Etsy that were perfect for the theme of the party. It was really inexpensive to actually have those printed out and mount them ourselves. If we had used a Cricut, that would have been really expensive because of the cost of cardstock, because of the cost of vinyl, and it would have been really time consuming. So to save money and to save time, we kind of supplemented some of the uh, DIYs with digital downloads. I ordered another big sign for the gift shop and uh, we can figure out what we're gonna do if you want a bigger sign for the snack bar. Yeah, I feel like each table should have this type of sign behind it. So we have this main one for the main cake table, mm -hmm. then another one that says gift shop, and another one that says snack bar. Mm -hmm. So each table is like matching like that. So these, we're just gonna mount onto foam board. Okay. So we got signs, we've also got these little things. So stickers to add to goodie boxes, goodie boxes wraps for the water bottles, mm -hmm. And a couple little table signs, just to, you know, if you want to add some. One that says rules and one that says a free pass. So to bring this backyard water park theme to life, I really wanted to make it seem like you are entering into a water park. So some of the DIYs that we're doing include making signage so that you can see where the gift shop is and the snack bar and the names of all the different rides that we're gonna have. And then to set the actual theme of the water park itself, it's a beach themed water park. So we need those beachy elements. We found this really cute DIY where you can make a coral reef out of pool noodles and I felt like that would be pretty affordable as far as materials and it looks simple to do but we're gonna see. In advance I asked my daughter Ashley to give me the dimensions of her backyard because there's gonna be a lot going on in the backyard and we really wanted to make sure everything fit. First fit diagram I have is the layout of the yard just making sure we have room for everything. So I've got the dimensions of the yard, where the bounce house is gonna be, and where our little pools are gonna be where the splash pad's gonna be. And then on the patio, I think we talked about putting the tables in a different spot or just having the main table here, gift table here. Yeah, I think those, we just need to change the what the tables are. So this is my vision for the main table, the signs in the back. I don't think the cake is gonna to be towering in front of the sign. Mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be a pretty flat cake, but whatever sculptures we decide to do or we do the coral sculptures or balloon sculptures, on either side of that main table. And then the snack bar, it's also gonna have a big sign that I can draw that in. So we're gonna have three table stations. A main station that's gonna have some decor and the cake on it. Snack bar station with, um, 
you know, individually packaged snacks and popsicles and popcorn. And then the gift shop station, which is actually just a place to lay out the uh, goodie bags that the kids can take home. A lot of you guys have been asking me if I would ever consider becoming a real party planner. And while I am going to Houston to help my sister with this party, unfortunately, I cannot travel the world to help all of y'all with yours. But I am working on something really exciting that will allow me to help y'all out digitally. So if you're interested, I'll have a link down below where you guys can sign up for more info. So my niece Bella is turning three and a lot of her little friends are also in that toddler age range. So it's gonna be a bunch of little kids. So of course we don't need to go too crazy with the actual water park rides and activities. We wanna keep it baby friendly, toddler friendly. We don't need to go overboard and that's also gonna help us stick to the budget. For the yard, we have a really cool bounce house with a water slide aspect to it. Then we have the splash pad that we've ordered that's probably about as big as this room. I think it's 11 feet mm -hmm. in diameter. And then we have two inflatable baby pools. One, we're just gonna put water in it so the little, little ones can splash around in it. But then the other one, we're gonna put sensory objects in it. And we also have, mm, I think it's a 17 foot slip and slide, plus a big bucket of bubble accessories, bubble wands, bubble guns. I feel like we have all of our main stuff. We know what we want each main table to be. We've got kind of like the main signs. We know the main attractions, the rides of the water park, the slide, all that stuff. But now we need to fill in sort of all the little details and extra decorations and stuff. Dollar Tree right now has their whole summer collection out with a lot of this like tropical stuff. And I feel like we can just kind of go shopping and get inspired. She has those columns that hold up her patio. You can put stuff around, more stuff to sprinkle in between things to just make it look more festive. We're definitely gonna hit up Dollar Tree because that is one of my go-to spots just in general for party planning, but especially a party like this, and especially being that it's summertime, we're doing this water park, ocean, beachy themed party, and I know that Dollar Tree tends to carry a lot of cute little things like that. So while we do have a specific list of supplies and materials that we need for this party, I also just kinda wanna check out what kind of summertime themed things they might have. I'm really hopeful that when we go shopping for supplies and activities for this party that certain things are in stock. We've already gotten into the summer and people are already buying out the things that are pool related, outdoor related. I'm hoping that we have good luck at the different stores that we go to. If not, we'll just have to improvise and make it work. Little coconut cups. These ones are cute. What's this? These multi-set, like little regular ones. Wands like this. I think we should get like these for our bubble bucket. for our little baby pool sensory play. Little jellyfish for the pool. Get one of each kind. got everything. We got all the stuff to go on the goodie boxes. We got stuff for the table. We got tablecloths and the paper plates and cups. We got all the stuff for the sensory pool, like the little extra pool toys, little floaty things. I feel like we did really good. Just got a couple more things to get. I want to go to Walmart because they have a good selection of balloons that aren't as pricey as Party City and look for a pink pool noodle. And we're good. I'll probably do better on Amazon getting the exact balloons and exact colors that I need because you can get like all green, all whatever, and so I'm trying to do that because I just need green for our little seaweed. But I wanted to get a big number three. They have a palm tree and a mermaid. Definitely there's more on Amazon, I already know because I 
know from when I got some for Zaya's mermaid party. Anything for Bella. So shopping was a success at Dollar Tree and Walmart. I feel like we got the majority of the stuff that we needed. Those are two of my favorite places to shop for parties. And I always try to save Party City as a last resort because Party City is a lot more pricey. And so far we haven't even needed to go to Party City, so. Don't sleep on Amazon. We also placed a really big order on Amazon because that's the other place that I tend to get all my party stuff. So Amazon, Walmart, Dollar Tree. Those are the three best places. Amazon is great for finding specialty items that are just sort of random that maybe Walmart or Dollar Tree or whatever just may not carry, such as a bag of ball pit balls in these particular rainbow colors. We're gonna use these as one of our water park attractions, which is a sensory pool. Speaking of which, we also got this two pack of blow up kitty pools from Amazon. Another one of our water park rides that we're gonna have is this splash pad. And then this is what I mean when I say check Walmart, Dollar Tree, and Amazon first before you go to a place like Party City because I know Party City has these types of things, these little paper popcorn boxes, party favors, this multi-pack of kids sunglasses, but usually Amazon has it for a better price. So we got these to go in our goodie boxes for our gift shop and these are for the snack bar to put the popcorn in. And then you can also find a lot of good party decor and just like little decorative things on Amazon. So we got this big pack of like 96 different fake palm leaves. So these will be cool to just sort of place all around the backyard to give it that tropical flair. And these are actually table skirts, sort of that Hawaiian tropical grass skirt look. And it also has like a cute little border around it. And then lastly, another good thing to order from Amazon is balloons, especially if you're looking for certain specialty balloons. We ordered a pack of ocean animals. So like cute little fish and octopus and stuff. And then if you need like certain colors or a certain size or certain shape, it's really easy to just search for exactly what you need versus like I said, try to go to the store and pick out all the different little packs. It's just easier on Amazon. They tend to have like those specialty shapes and colors. We did get some from Walmart as well. And then, like I said, I ordered some of the specialty ones from Amazon. And then here's our haul from mostly Dollar Tree and a little bit of Walmart. We really found a lot of good themed items at Dollar Tree, like these cups for the snack bar. We got some lays, some party essentials, a bunch of stuff to use as goodies for our gift shop. And then a lot of ocean, fishing summer themed toys and bubbles and stuff to use as part of our water park activities. Plus we got all these pool noodles that we're gonna need for a DIY project and some foam board that we also need for a DIY. So we're done shopping. We actually ended up having a lot of luck at Dollar Tree and Walmart and everything. And we got the rest of everything we needed from Amazon. Amazon always comes in clutch. And now it's time to actually get started on these DIYs. We really had to make the DIYs for this party portable since we are gonna be traveling like three hours in a car. So we couldn't do huge balloon arches, although we would have loved to. All the DIYs had to be pretty compact and either able to transport easily or to assemble on site really quickly. So the first thing we're gonna get started with are the signs and all of the other digital downloads. So we have our big signs printed and mounted. They turned out really good. We got them done at Office Depot. This size, which is gonna go on the tabletop. This is the snack bar menu. And then we've got the three big, big ones. The main one that just says Bella's Beach Water Park. So this is like the entrance sign. One for our snack bar table, which I actually had to illegally <laughs> I don't know if it's technically illegal, but the Etsy seller didn't have one that said snack bar. So I went in, photoshopped it to say snack bar. She only had this one that says gift shop. I found a matching font. I think it turned out good. So these were mounted for us at Office Depot, but I think 
it would be nice if we actually cut them out around the edges so that we don't have the white border. So we can use, I think just a, you know, exacto knife or a box cutter to do that. But we also have these other signs. These are like the directional signs tell you where to go throughout the water park. These are just printed on paper and we need to mount them ourselves. So we have plain foam board to, you know, glue these on, cut them out and make that whole setup. Also, it depends on how much you want to spend. It does cost more, obviously, to get them to mount it for you and do this whole shebang. Each of these big signs was like $70. It adds up quick. It definitely adds up if you have them do it for you versus if you just get it printed regular and mount it yourself. So we just kind of wanted to show y'all both options. In that same vein, we also have two smaller signs that are going to go on the tables that we need to mount ourselves to make them sturdy so they stand up by themselves. And then also we have the stickers, which are going to go on our goodie boxes from Amazon. So we gotta stick those on. And the last thing we got printed are the water bottle wraps. Wraps, water labels. Water bottle labels, wraps. So obviously you would cut these out, wrap it, and I think just a little piece of scotch tape mm. would probably be the easiest way. So that's all of our digital downloads. Da -da -da. So you see what I mean about the, the jaggedy edges? Trim it up, trying to make it look as clean as possible, but for what it is, I don't think it needs to be super perfect because you're gonna be looking at it like this. But that's the main idea, so now we just gotta repeat for all of these. Okay, I'm trying it with my trusty <laughs> kitchen knife that I have clearly used for DIY projects in the past. We don't keep this with the regular silverware. I keep it separate just for DIY. I know there's like a real version of this that I should buy, but there we go. Once you kind of get it going, I do feel like the serratedness is helping because then you can really like saw through it. Who needs real power tools? <laughs> Kitchen utensils and a little ingenuity is all you need. It's still a little jaggedy, but it, I think it's a little less jaggedy. It's more uniformly jaggedy <laughs> at the very least. And that was faster. So I think I would recommend something serrated. Maybe get the proper tool, but something serrated for cutting through this type of stuff I think works better. We also need to cut these out because I want it to just be the shape of the wood and not have the white border. So I'm thinking the same thing, except when we got them mounted at Office Depot, they have this like plastic film on the back for some reason. We didn't ask for that. It's kind of weird to me that it's like protected on the back and not the front and then you can't peel it off like it ruins it if you try to peel it. So I'm a little concerned about trying to like cut through it, but we're about to see. I don't know if this is just how the foam board at Office Depot comes. That's something to be aware of. So let's see how this, I'm scared. There's no turning back. Yeah, it's like really hard to cut. I may not be able to cut this out because neither of these are really going through it very really well. See, I thought we were saving ourselves some trouble by getting them mounted, but as you can see, mounting it and cutting it ourselves was pretty easy and it's cheaper and this seems a little uncuttable. So maybe don't get it pre-mounted at Office Depot. Maybe that's not helping you. So do we just leave it like this and it has the little logo at the bottom and everything? I feel like that doesn't look good. My other thought was like, if I get some good, good scissors, YOLO, right? I mean, if anything, we could get another one printed. Like this kind of works. Okay, okay. I guess that'll work. Desperate times call for desperate measures. I should get my, my actual heavy duty scissors from, from school when I did my fashion design major. Brought out the big guns. Here's like big, heavy, real scissors. Let's see if it works better. It's just hard to control where you're cutting. Okay. How am I gonna do this jiggity jaggedy part at the top? I have no idea, it's gonna take forever. Is it even possible? 
Yeah, I guess it's possible. It's just gonna take a while. So final verdict, do not get them pre-mounted at Office Depot, get them printed normally. Get yourself some normal regular foam board that's easy to cut through, glue it on yourself, and then you'll be able to cut through it a lot easier than this heavy duty stuff that they use at Office Depot. I think we'll be able to you know, make it work. And then for these, since it's like the same, I think we'll just leave it with the white border. I feel like the white border doesn't look as bad on these because it's less and it doesn't have like the little logo like this one does at the bottom. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> So we made good progress with putting the signs and everything together. They're not fully done yet because we do need to assemble them on site, actually put them on the stakes and everything when we get there. So hopefully that turns out well. Next up, we have our stickers and our goodie boxes. Oh, that's easy. Literally, <laughs> you just you do that. You surprised yourself. <laughs> you literally just push it from the sides and it whoop, goes together at the bottom. So these are super cute for the gift shop. We're gonna fill it with the goodies that we got from Dollar Tree. Then we have our stickers, which unfortunately are not pre-cut. I know there's a way that you can get circle-shaped sticker sheets and then format your image to fit the circles that are already pre-cut into the sticker sheets. I know if you, if you know what you're doing with you know today's technology, there's a way that you can make this more automated. But if you don't have a Cricut, if you don't have all those things, you can always just use little old scissors. <laughs> we will put them on the front of the boxes, like so. And the last of our digital downloads, the water bottle labels. I think an efficient way to cut these since they're rectangles is to use the paper slicer thingy machine. For the party, I think we're gonna actually use the little mini size water bottles. Cause I find even if it's not kids, even adults at parties, like they never drink a whole water bottle and it's kind of wasteful. We're just gonna test it on one of these regular water bottles that I have. So everything is looking good so far. There's a few more steps to some of these signs to fully bring them to life. Obviously we need to put them on something so they can actually stand up. And there's some more elements that we want to add to some of these just to finish them off. But for now, I feel like we're at a good place. We're also of course going to fill our goodie boxes with goodies. And I think these are going to be so cute sitting on our gift shop table. So for these pool noodle coral reef sculptures, art installations, if you will, the main supply is pool noodles. So we've got all these different colors. And I think the other supplies that I will need, the reason why I say I think is because I'm kind of just making this up. I'm definitely going off of inspo pics from Pinterest. So I'm not making up this whole concept, but as far as exactly what it's made out of and exactly how to do it, I sort of just glanced at the photos and then decided I can do that. Let me just figure it out. So I think I'm gonna end up using some spray insulation foam. I've used this for a lot of different DIYs and making props like this for Christmas and birthday parties in the past. Pretty sure I'm gonna use a piece of foam board as like my base and I know I'm gonna need some hot glue. We're planning to put this on top of the table that's gonna have the birthday cake in the middle. And so we just want like two little sculptures on either side on the table. So I'm thinking if I cut this in half, that would be the right size. These would be the base. And then I'm thinking pretty tall. I mean, I'll have to see how tall I can make it. I was planning on using like half a pool noodle so I can split it between the two. I think that'll be pretty good. Okay, so I've got my inspo pics pulled up. I have several different pictures and they've all got slightly different 
shapes and sizes and styles going on. I'm just freestyling this. I'm really interested to see how these cut. I'm thinking my handy dandy knife will work. Okay, let's start with one of the easy shapes. So basically they've got some pieces that are like just little short pieces that are cut at an angle, just like this. Okay, it cuts really easy. So they have like a little bunch of those of like slightly different sizes. And I guess it makes sense to do one angle cut and one straight cut. It's a little wonky, but that's okay. It's supposed to be organic. I'm gonna do like a taller one. And I wanna do something else with the rest of this green color. Another shape that they have is like slice this way, pull it around and then they like flared it out. <laughs> that looks like some underwater something, right? I'm thinking I will hot glue all these different shapes down to the foam board, and then I'll use the spray foam around the bottom of it to make it all lumpy and bumpy. Now we just gotta continue making all these different pool noodle shapes. There's probably like 10 different ways to cut it and glue it. Another one is they cut a bunch of rings like this, and then they basically hot glued them together like this in a stack and made it kind of squiggly going up. So got my hot glue, got my glue gun warming up. In the meantime, I'm trying to sort of just get all my pieces cut and then I'll start gluing stuff together. I got my blue circles, my purple circles, and I want to try and make the spiral shape. Okay, I did it. That made the two. I was trying to make three, but I feel like it's going to be too skinny and flimsy. You see the vision? <laughs> you see the vision, right? Another shape that I see on here that I think would be good to do with these thicker noodles is you cut a ring, but then you cut the ring in half. And then the last main one that I'm seeing is with the rings, you can stack up like this, like I said before, but then they also did some where it's like this, like sort of horizontal stacking versus vertical stacking. So I'm gonna take all the rest of these pool noodles and keep cutting out all these different shapes, get a nice variety of different shapes and sizes, and then we'll start gluing. Oh, how do you get yours so perfect? I, oh, I thought this was pretty bad. Look at mine. <laughs> Okay, after much cutting and gluing, we have two clusters of pool noodle coral ready to be actually arranged and put together. I'm actually really proud of how this is turning out so far. Get the biggest pieces sort of spaced out and glued on first and then just start filling it in. When I go in with the spray foam after, I think that'll help give it some extra support, but this is just to kind of get everything stuck in place. This, this, this little cluster in the corner, this cluster maybe here. We've got these to fill in with. Okay, here's what they look like all glued down to the foam board. Now I'm gonna go in with the Loctite foam, the insulation foam, and cover the foam board so that it looks more organic and natural and bumpy and lumpy. So now I need to paint this. I'm not sure what color or colors yet. I need to look back at my inspo, but pretty sure white doesn't make sense, so. Oh, my God. 
So we finished the coral reef sculptures and they turned out super cute. I'm actually super happy with them. I knew they were gonna be cute, especially once we painted them. I feel like that really brought everything together. I'm pretty confident about the signs and the coral sculpture, but the other big aspect to our decorations are the DIY balloon sculptures that I'm supposed to be putting together. And that is something that has to be done completely on site. So I'm a little nervous about actually having enough time to put these together. And I technically haven't really done these exact sculptures before. I don't know, it is a little bit of a risk, but hopefully it all works out. So to make things more complicated, I just got back from an international trip yesterday. I'll be traveling to an event in Beaumont today, and I won't have a chance to come back to Austin before the party on Saturday. So number one, everything needs to be in my car that I'm taking today to the party. Number two, I won't be here to kind of ride herd on the rest of the team to make sure that they get everything done. So it's a little nerve wracking, but uh, hopefully with all the scheduling we've done, all the planning we've done, we can pull it off without a hitch. Are you bringing all these snacks to the, oh, this is for the party. <laughs> So she's already got some snacks in here for the party. To get everything to Houston, we packed up half the stuff in my mom's car because we got a lot of stuff and then we're splitting it up and packing the other stuff in my car, except there's a catch because I actually ended up having a freak accident with my car where my garage door fell down and landed on my car. It's a long story for another day, but I had to stop and get a rental. Luckily they had a minivan available, so we do have a good amount of space to pack up the rest of the party supplies. It's gonna be my brother driving myself Zoe and Zaya so we can really sit these seats down and have more space back here how do I do that I'm trying to figure out this rental car how do we put the that's nifty and this side and then that that's scary <laughs> so I think that's everything will be good for the morning Getting everything done on time is gonna be critical for this party. To tell you the truth, I'm not worried about myself. I'm gonna be on time. I've got my list, I've got my schedule, I know when I need to be, where, at what time. I'm a little bit worried about the rest of the team, but uh, hopefully they've got their stuff together and they can pull it off. I'm a little worried about being on time and sticking to our timeline and our schedule because we don't have a lot of wiggle room. We've got to hit the road early in the morning, make that two to three hour trip to Houston, and then we've got a couple of hours to set up this entire party from scratch before the guests start to arrive. And I will be the first to admit that I tend to be late. So I'm just hoping that we can stay on track and stay on schedule because I really don't want to run out of time. My assistant Zoe has been super helpful with the logistics of this whole entire process. We have a schedule, we have lists, we have to-do lists for everyone involved. We're actually really organized. So as long as we can stick to everything that we have written down, we should be good. It's the morning of the party. It is 7.35 a.m. And of course, I'm running around doing last minute things. I've got to get myself together. But I also almost forgot that we have a few more signs that we mounted on a foam board that need to be cut out before we leave. Ideally, I guess we could cut them there, but we're trying to have as little to do there as possible and get as much of this type of stuff pre-done. So I'm trying to do this, but also it came to me in a dream last night that for this water park theme, similar to the Ravens Resort theme that I did for one of my parties, check that video out if you didn't see it, I had one of my friends wearing a staff shirt and like greeting people at the door and just helping with things around the party. And it was just a really cute touch. So for this party, it's sort of the same thing. Like we're supposed to be selling the idea that we're at a water park. So it would be cute if we had staff shirts and I started thinking, you know, getting my imagination going at a beach themed water park, what would the staff's uniforms look like? It could be solid color shirts of all these colors like green, orange, purple, blue, yellow. And they would just be solid color t-shirts that say Bella's Beach on the front, staff on the back. They could be Hawaiian print. And then since I just thought about this last night and I woke up this morning thinking about it with no time to really do anything about it, I went to my closet to see what I might have. And I 
found this tie-dye shirt. This is actually Zaya's shirt, but I also have another one. And I feel like that kind of goes with the vibe. Like maybe that could also be what the staff's uniform is, is like wearing tie-dye shirts. So I texted Zoe to see if she had a tie-dye shirt that she could wear so we could be matching. But I still really wanted to like put Bella's Beach and put staff on the back because that's what really like, you know, sells it. We're supposed to be leaving the house in one hour and I don't have time to like, I don't know, I might just barely have enough time to cricket something real quick to stick on. These are the small details that I think only I really care about, but I feel like you're really like, when it comes to a theme, those are the details that really like take the theme to the next level. Done. So now we have the individual signs for each water park ride the Bella's Bubble Station, the Triple Tidal Wave, the Tsunami Splasher, the Little Lagoons, and the Seaside Slip and Slide. <laughs> we came up with all of these names to make it sound like real water park rides, even though they are just little slip and slides and baby pools and stuff, but <laughs> we gotta sell the theme. Yeah, I woke up this morning, tried to rush over because I felt like I was running late, and uh, I got there and Raven's still in her pajamas, so I'm like, I thought we had to be there, leave by 8.30, so I waited around, thought it was gonna be a little bit longer. <laughs> Gang's all here. You're lucky to be Are you hiding from the camera? <laughs> all right, so it's 10.38. We are, I guess, like a little over halfway through the trip. We still have about an hour left to go. We just stopped at the gas station, come on, Zaya, to have a bathroom break and a snack break and everything. Back on the road. I was actually very tired and sleepy, so I stopped to get something to drink, and uh, I needed to use the bathroom and grab an energy drink, and then we got in the car, and I realized we were only 15 minutes away. We just arrived. It's 11.24. We're here early. Bella! Hello! How's it going? Good. Bella! Happy birthday! Time to unload. Oh, look at the cake! Wow. Trying to peek in there. That's cool. Okay, so we're here. We made it on time. We're doing great on time so far. We just want to get straight into setting things up. I think the first thing that we're going to start with are the tables and what's going on each table. We just brought everything inside, got all our supplies. My sister already has some supplies of her own. My parents are also about to pull up. They were coming from Beaumont, as we said, so they're going to be here probably in about 30 minutes with the rest of our supplies. We need to wait for what they have, but we have most of the stuff that we need to sort of get started with the tables, like the tablecloths and skirts and stuff. So I'm gonna start with that, and then I really need to work on the balloon sculptures because that might take a while and I don't exactly know what I'm doing, so. Okay, just kidding, I lied. My mom actually does have some key components in her car. She has the pumps, we can't start blowing anything up. She has the tablecloths, which are the first layer of the tables. She has the stakes for the main sign. She has all the main, like, pieces that we really need to really get started. We do need to wait for her, but she should be here in like 20 minutes. So I think it's fine. My sister had a pump here that we could use so we could get started while we wait for my parents to come with our other pumps. This is the bounce house that we're getting, not the one that we ordered, but it's 23 by 14 and it's a princess. Luckily the color scheme is still not far off like it's purple blue and pink okay so i mean so yes it's way? a princess castle but i feel like whatever <laughs> yeah it's a water, water slide. slide so like which way that looks long so it looks like it needs to go long that way you know 23 by 14. 23 by 14. yeah and it's i don't know how to even imagine that yeah i imagine it like 14 by 23 sliding down this way or you want it to go like this slide this way I thought it would be better than sliding this way. We can move everything else around it. The only problem is, you said it's coming at one o'clock? Yeah. Yeah, I guess we just won't. Um, Don't fill everything up so yeah. quickly. Okay, Zaya, stop filling the pool. 
I just got to the party and I have been tasked with getting the tables ready. That means uh, the, the main table, the snack bar, and the gift shop. And already we've had things go wrong. So uh, the decorations I'm putting on the table came with pre-sticky Velcro and it just really wasn't sticking. So we had to pull out the duct tape and I had to pull out some glue guns to make everything work. I'm dead tired, but I think I have just enough energy to pull this party off. We're setting up all hands on deck. It's chaotic as we expected, but it's a little bit more chaotic than I expected because we didn't account for things like wind and certain things just not working and sticking together right. We've got signs falling down. The wind is blowing things around. I'm struggling with the balloons because of the wind. So there's always things like that that you gotta kind of leave extra time for because you never know what's gonna happen once you really start setting things up. I'm glad we got here about 30 minutes earlier than we planned because we needed all of those 30 minutes. So I have a few, you know, tricks up my sleeve, little hacks that I use to tape things together and know how to do certain things. And those are just things you learn along the way. It's like stuff I can't even explain to y'all. I'm using tape in funny ways and using balloon strings in funny ways to just try to like get stuff together. Something I can definitely recommend to you guys following along at home is to always have an emergency kit of just all different types of duct tape, scotch tape, double-sided tape, string, zip ties, things like that because they really come in handy for setups. And then of course, you know, you have those moments where something just doesn't work and I might try to troubleshoot it and fix it and I just can't get it to work and you just gotta nix the idea. I've learned that you can't spend too much time trying to fix one little aspect and then you run out of time for everything else. There was more that I wanted to do with the balloons for this party, but I was struggling with it. So I just kind of had to do what I could, nix the rest and move on to the next thing that needed to be set up. So I went into my balloon sculpture project, half confident, half not, sort of freestyle sort of going off of Pinterest. And I think the results speak to that. I think what I was able to do turned out pretty cute, but I wasn't able to do like my full vision. We really didn't have a good plan for how we were going to mount the signs, the beautiful signs that were like the centerpiece and the key pieces of this party. But thankfully I brought lots of duct tape, thick duct tape, and we actually duct taped the signs to our posts and it worked pretty good. The hoses were a little bit tricky because um, we couldn't figure out how to get enough pressure to the, um, the pool flotation devices. But we figured it out and uh, Everything worked out all right. There was a lot of mud uh, while we were setting up, so we had to try to find a way to cover up the holes with some of the little pools and the, um, the slide, and then had to kind of counter the wind, taping some stuff down. That was kind of difficult. Other than that, everything was pretty smooth. Our signs point the complete wrong way. These were just pre-made. They didn't know which way we needed them to point when we downloaded them, but I think I'm gonna cut off the arrow. So I'm gonna... I guess tape it from the back. So now it can point the right way. <laughs> That's a pretty easy fix. So happy that the team left town on time, got here on time. I think the two hours that we have planned for to set up was just about perfect because we just about got everything done in two hours. It's like 2.05, the party is supposed to start at two. People are starting to arrive and we're pretty much done setting up. Like I said, we did have to nix a few things. Of course, we're rushing, trying to get last things in place. But overall, I think the theme is reading. You can definitely tell that it's a beach themed water park party, which was my goal. So I'm happy with that. I'm happy with like the overall look of everything. Of course, I am a little bit of a perfectionist. So I do wish that there was a few other details that we could have gotten together. But generally speaking, I, I give it a thumbs up.
happy birthday! Happy birthday! Oh my gosh, you're three years old. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear Bella! Happy birthday to you! The cake's gonna melt! I gotta bring it back inside! The cake was melting. It's falling off the back. What is this cutting? This is what you cut a birthday cake. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Like this. Oh, I thought you were gonna do it like a pie. No. The process was very low stress. I really didn't have very much stress at all. It was nice having not to have to plan anything. I didn't have to do nothing. Basically, I just had to say, this is the bounce house that we're gonna get. Y'all figure it out. Everything was amazing. I, well, obviously I didn't plan anything, but what my thoughts were and like how everything was gonna turn out, I just had no clue what it was gonna be. So when I saw everything come together, I was like, wow, this is like a little backyard party. <laughs> like this was supposed to be a little, a small little party. It was supposed to be just like, something small. Bella had a blast. She's still having a blast. She has never seen so much water. She just had a great time. She loved all the decorations. She just loved it all. It's really cool to see Raven come up with these ideas and themes for these parties. Never really know what to expect. A lot of detail to everything. Party's over and um, the whole time I was looking around and kind of dreading cleanup. So really I just wanted to go home after this and get on the road, but um, got to go help clean up and uh, get everything tore down and then back to normal. I think the party was a roaring success. The kids are having a blast. My uh, daughter, Ashley, was so impressed with all the cute decorations we did. It looked pretty much like we envisioned. My final thoughts on this party is that I think it was the best planned party we have done so far, thanks in part to Zoe and her skills. But I think what I learned is to make a list, make a schedule, make more lists, over plan and over schedule. And if you do that, everything kind of just evens out, turns out great. In the future, I think I'm just continuing to learn that I need to give myself more time. I always underestimate how long things are going to take. Clearly, I still haven't fully learned that lesson because I still need to be giving myself more time. Being that we did this party on a little bit of a smaller budget and tried to keep it more affordable, I do feel like it still lived up to the hype. It still turned out really cute. I still feel like our decorations made a big impact. And as the guests were arriving, I'm hearing everybody say like, wow, this is so cute. This is so nice. People are still very impressed. We were able to save money by doing a lot of really fun DIYs. And we were able to find a lot of cool supplies for this party at places like Dollar Tree and Walmart. So this just goes to show that you can definitely throw a really fun party that has a big impact but on a smaller budget.